Hello, and welcome to episode three of Spooky Gals, the podcast where we explore all sorts of real-life paranormal occurrences, from ghost sightings and hauntings to reported alien and cryptid encounters, myths, folklore and legends. Every week we'll cover a different true spooky story. We're your hosts, I'm Katrina. And I'm Jasmine. Hello. Hello, Jasmine. <laughs> nice to see you again. Nice to I'm see you too. I'm loving these weekly updates. I, yeah, no, nice but except nothing's checking. really going on in my life, so there's nothing much to update. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty much the consensus with everyone. Yeah. Like, for example, today all I did at work was watch the presidential debate, which was hilarious, <laughs> by the way. It was excellent comedy. Um, I would hate to be an American right now. Yes. Because <laughs> that was pretty embarrassing. I think we can agree on all accounts. <laughs> I don't know if you know because it it was on at like two in the morning. I yeah, think. no, I was asleep. UK time. Yeah, yeah. lots lots of fun. But yeah, yeah. how about you? I've been been up to anything cool? Lately? No, as as you already know, <laughs> I I just bought loads of rubbish from Home Bargains. The, um, <laughs> Liverpool's favorite Liverpool's favorite um chain shops. I love it so much. I love all of those shit shops. Yeah, like complete crap you don't need. Ninety nine mm. pence. I bought, there's one in Hong Kong, which is similar, and, mm. but it's like a Japanese shop. And I bought, it's like the $10 shop, right? So similar kind of idea. Mm-hmm. And I think I bought like five things which were unicorn themed and I'm not used to any of them yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll course. wait and see. So what do we have on today? I'm very intrigued to hear this week's story. Okay, so this week's story is not actually a paranormal occurrence but people who suffer from it have thought that maybe it's like demonic possession okay so i'm all about demonic possession That's yeah cool. so it's actually a medical condition oh even and better. it's perfect because i want to give a shout out to a girl called lexi whose instagram handle is october all year underscore and she messaged me and said, like, oh, this is the type of podcast that I'm looking for. And she's been so lovely. Um, and she works in the medical field. Okay. Thank you, Lexi. Whoever, what's her name? October all year. It's October all year <laughs> underscore okay. is her Instagram. So, so, so did she give you the story? No, no. It? it was, I'd had this already written, but I wasn't sure because I have like five episodes, but I wasn't sure which odds to do them in. Oh, okay, fair. So I fair, thought fair, fair. I thought maybe this one would be a bit out there. Okay, I'm intrigued. I've been I've been watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy. Um, <laughs> Have you? Which I'm, I know your mother has been watching it for years. I've been watching it so. for years. I love it. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't. I thought. Oh, okay. Well, I've only. Well, I'm I'm on season five now. I am um, one thousand so. percent sure I tried to get you to watch it and you hated it. Definitely, definitely. I did not have any interest in watching it. No. But um, I began, because it's now all on Netflix. So I've, oh. I've been to watch the first five seasons in a month. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been good. It's, as you can tell, I'm working really hard at my job currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Of course. Of course. So, okay, so, so, so tell me what it is. And- the story that I am covering is Alien Hand Syndrome. Alien Hand. Alien Hand Syndrome. So. This, I'm, I'm just processing. Okay, so while you're Alien. while you're processing, my sources for this were Wikipedia, Healthline.com, Neurology.org, SemanticScholar.org, and an article that's titled "When Your Brain Becomes Your Puppet Master" by Erman uh. Mizilisoy. Mizil, <laughs> it's okay. It's a really, it's a really difficult name, but um, that's on that's from Medium dot com. <laughs> okay, so alien hand syndrome. Okay, so alien hand syndrome, also known as anarchic hand syndrome or Doctor Strangelove syndrome, after the nineteen sixty four film in which the titular character suffers from the condition, is a rare neurological condition that causes one hand to act seemingly of its own free will moving as though it has a mind of its own in what seems like purposeful movements. The hand feels alien to the person affected and may actually work against the wishes of the person and what they're actively trying to do. 
This includes actions such as the affected hand closing a drawer that the other hand had just opened, unbuttoning a shirt while the person is trying to button it, and picking up objects and refusing to let go. However, the most concerning element of alien hand syndrome, seen only in extreme cases, is when your own out of control limb tries to harm or even kill you. Um, I know. I like this. Why am I getting like flavors of Chucky? I don't know why I'm thinking of Chucky when I think of all this. Neither do I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I watched The Seed of Chucky recently. It was a great film. Okay, go. Okay, so alien hand syndrome can develop following injury or trauma to the brain, including after a stroke, due to a tumor or lesions, and brain surgery especially the surgery that's sometimes used to treat severe epilepsy, where the two hemispheres of the brain are separated. Which is horrifying. <laughs> Have you seen Ratchet yet? No, I'm going to watch it. I cannot wait. You need to. I love Sarah Paulson. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I watched it all in two days. And there's a lot of stuff about, like... I just love... I've always been fascinated by, like, old-fashioned kinds of, like, psychiatric yeah, treatments. Yeah, no, horrible. So, in Ratchet, there's a lot about, like... Um, there's a lot about like uh lobotomies oh, what's it called? lobotomies yeah. oh my god it's amazing hmm. i didn't know that they had like two different kinds of lobotomy initially e um, but you'll see all of that in the show lovely so the condition was first recorded in 1908 by german neuropsychiatrist kurt goldstein of course he was german and usually affects the person's non-dominant hand there is no known cure although it can be helped by giving the affected hand something to hold onto so that it's occupied and doesn't try to grab up for things. Mm. So this is where we get to um, like how some people can perceive it as like them being possessed. Yeah, I mean, it does, it, it's, it sounds pretty much like a possession to me. To yeah, 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 yeah. Like you could, you could <laughs> like, totally see someone like mm. thinking that they're possessed by the devil in... The, yes. the 1700s or the 1800s if or their hand now, yeah if their hand just starts honest. attacking even them even now if I saw mm. someone like slapping themselves <laughs> yeah. I'd be like oh, okay uh, demon demon <laughs> okay easily a demon yeah so in order to psychologically cope with the alien hand some patients engage in personification of the affected hand referring to it in the third person or even giving it a name for example doctors R.S. Doody and Jay Jankovic. Yes, <laughs> Sorry, that's her name. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R.S. Doody. <laughs> I was hoping I could say it fast enough that you didn't pick up on it. <laughs> Nothing gets past me, especially mm. not Doody. Okay. So, R. S. <laughs> <laughs> so, doctors R.S. Doody and Jay Jankovic, in a paper published in 1992, described a patient who named her affected hand baby joseph when the hand engaged in playful annoying activities such as pinching her nipples what? akin to biting while nursing she would laugh and tell baby joseph to stop being naughty okay this just sounds like a really strange kind of sexual kink you know? <laughs> like depersonifying your hand so that like you feel better about masturbation you know it's it honestly seriously it sounds like like something which like you would do out of like catholic guilt yeah you know, i see because, that yeah people just say oh it wasn't me i'm a priest it was it was baby jennifer it wasn't me. <laughs> Ew, that's so, so gross no, justin <laughs> but it's true <laughs> that's where my mind because on it that's a perfect way to kind of like get away with it under the eyes of God and the church. Ow, sorry, my wrist is uh, fucked. It's a perfect way to get away with it by just kind of like, oh, I didn't, I didn't fuck that child. That was, oh, that was Gerald's penis. It's my own <laughs> penis, but I refer to it as Gerald's. Uh, <laughs> Honestly. Okay. This is just sounding more and um, more fucked up. Please continue. Okay. Thank, thank <laughs> you for all of that, Jasmine. So, um... There was an article on neurology.org, which is by doctors Sarah Debray and Jill Demister. In this article, there is a video of a 94-year-old woman with alien hand syndrome in her left non-dominant hand, which she developed following a stroke. 
The video shows the woman in a hospital bed fighting with her left hand, which is trying to grab the tissue that she's holding in her right hand to blow her nose. She acknowledges ownership of the limb, but also talks to it as if it's a separate entity, shouting at it to stay away from my tissue, you're grabbing it, stay away I'm telling you, and pushing it away, even hitting it, saying there is plenty of room over there for you. I really hope I'm sorry I'm really I'm sorry I'm, I know I'm interrupting a, a, a lot this week I'm really hoping someone just chops their hand off <laughs> oh, I'm bad. really living for that yeah, I can't yeah. wait for no but it. there is a there is a condition where people um do feel like a limb doesn't belong to them so mm, then they try and get rid of it it's a form of body dysmorphia yeah where like you feel like there's something like physically wrong with your body and you're really deformed and you try and get rid of it or, or, or hide it. Mm. And it can be anything from like, oh, I'm ugly or like, my face is not a human face. Take it off. Yeah. You know, <laughs> two very extremes. So in this video, the woman also says that the hand keeps messing with her bandages and tugging on her IV. This is very scary to think about it doing something potentially dangerous or harmful to the person suffering from the disorder. So this leads us into the report that one patient suffering with alien hand syndrome described how her hand would claw and tear away at her bed sheets at night and would grab her by the throat and attempt to strangle her. This led the woman to believe that her hand was actually possessed by an evil spirit as this was the only way that she would be able to process what was happening. So obviously this is understandable if you suddenly have no control over a part of your body. Yeah. Similarly, an article from the January 1998 issue of the Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation tells of a 67-year-old man who was admitted into hospital with weakness on his left-hand side in his face, arm and leg, and then reported that his left hand became active at night and would crawl around, grasping his bed sheets, belt, rope and pockets, and would awaken him by clutching at his collar and the neck of his gown. Becoming so distressed by this, the patient began wearing an oven mitt to help inhibit the hand's activity, which successfully stopped the hand crawling and grasping things while inside the mitt. See, okay, now that 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 just sounds an, an awful lot like um, like that hand from Adam's family. Yeah. What was it called again? Oh, I can't remember. Was it wasn't called. Is knit. it called like thing? Yeah, it's called thing. Okay, yeah, cool. It's a cool thing. Well, either either the Adams family copied Dr. Seuss or Dr. Seuss copied Adams family. Either way, I want my money back. So, <laughs> I've actually got like an animatronic walking hand, which is one of my prized okay. possessions. <laughs> no, okay, now that, that's that's cool. Why have I never seen that? Oh, I don't know. I got it when I was like eight, probably. It's in my ottoman in the porch. <gasps> Nobody steal it. I know that I know <laughs> I know that my sister and I used to like break all oh, your Oh, you used to break everything. We used to break all your toys. Yeah. I still break everything now. Yeah, so. specifically my angel action figure. I know. Where I'm so sorry. Yeah, the, the arms you, came off that, You broke didn't they? off one arm and I attached it with some wire and then Zabby broke off the other arm. Which is Which we couldn't I'm not kidding. couldn't reattach. Listen, Katty, it wasn't me. It was my dispossessed hand, right? Okay. It was the devil. The devil did it. Yes. It wasn't me. No, that is you. Right. For any time someone calls me clumsy, I'm going to say, no, 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 no. It wasn't me. It was, it was baby Gerald. <laughs> my hand. <laughs> I'm obsessed with how... Why would you call your hand a baby? That makes it creepy. Well, it was probably because of, like, the nipple pinching. But that, I, I just thought the first thing I think of is my nipple yeah, gets well, pinched I'm, from the baby. Well, I don't know. That's weird. I'm telling you, that that, that woman, she's... Mm, mm, mm. Okay. <laughs> so, another report from the 1998 edition of the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery and Psychiatry details the case of an 81-year-old woman who developed the syndrome after being admitted to hospital following spells of tingling all the way down her left-hand side after which she suddenly became very disorientated and confused. On the second day in the hospital, she complained that her left hand was acting as if someone else was controlling it, hitting her head and face and saying that she was afraid of it. 
This is a direct quote from the article. She held her left hand with the right, claiming to keep him from hitting her. When asked what trouble brought her to the hospital, she said that her left hand tried to strangle her, and she repeated that someone was hitting and choking her neck, face and shoulder. She asked the nurse to restrain mm. her left hand, fearful that hitting of the breast will cause cancer. These intermittent movements had an irregular speed, with slow and smooth onset, but became jerky and rapid before hitting her body. It, this is just, this is just getting weird. The, again, now it's getting the trend weird. Of, well, it's again just the trend of how like everyone's just so protective of their boobs. Like, well, I hitting the breast will cause cancer. Yeah, like, but like, you know, it's it, yeah, but if you cause damage to any part of your body and it has to re that's not going to cause cancer getting a bruise won't cause cancer well otherwise i would have a lot of cancer yeah but the the cells have to be repaired uh, or replaced and then the more often they that happens the more likely it is that there will be a new cell that might become cancerous mm. basically the the more okay. the more rapidly your cells get Replace the more likely it is that there's going to be one with a mutation. Mm. Gets cool. Thank you, Cathy, yeah. for the biology lesson. You're welcome. Okay, creepy biology girls. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I suppose, like, your boobs, like, your upper body, like, if your hand's just hitting you in all of your upper body. Yeah, I don't know. I still... I s I still suspect foul play at work, and by foul play, I do mean sexual deviance. Oh. This is a sexually deviant granny and a sexually deviant young lady, and of course, all of the men. Okay, all of the men. So, <laughs> they have assumed that the onset of these symptoms was caused by a stroke, as her yeah. MRI showed signs of damage to her right occipital lobe, which is consistent with a stroke. A thorough exam showed that she had severe primary sensory loss on her left side, and for example, when shown a picture of two children in a car, she could only see the child on the right and couldn't see the car at all. She also couldn't distinguish her own left hand from the examiner's and could only copy drawings of simple shapes while her eyes were open, but could draw them better when her eyes were closed. So it is very much like a sensory, mm -hmm. sensory damage that causes it as well. Yeah, like a nerve damage. Yeah, and it's whatever side of the brain has been damaged, it affects the opposite side. Yeah, isn't that... Yeah, I thought... I always thought that one side of the brain controls the other side. Yeah, yeah. Or something like that. Yes, yeah. okay, okay. I thought, I thought, I, I swear I, I heard that on, like, something like a magic school bus <laughs> or something. <laughs> Miss Frizzle is life. Yeah. So, by the fifth day, the symptoms had thankfully begun to subside, but she was still afraid of her left hand and placed a pillow on her chest for protection from it. This improvement coincided with an improvement in her ability to fixate visually and better spatial awareness for reaching out to pick up any item with either hand. Although she continued to exhibit intermittent disorientation, by the end of the second week in hospital, she was no longer afraid of her own hand. Hmm. So, there was nothing in there about amputation. No, why would there be? I asked for one thing. That's a I asked that's for a an amputee. That's a completely different <laughs> medical disorder, Jasmine. In this, they they acknowledge ownership of their own hand. They know it's their hand, but they have no control but, over it. But there is also a sense that they're not, though. They're, yeah. Like they're calling it it. Yeah, in order he, they're they're depersonalizing. Yeah, but it. they still know it's their hand. Okay, so it's it, it's about recognition and ownership of their body part as opposed to it doesn't belong here. Yes. Okay. Well. So so that is all. Alien hand. That is all I have on alien hand syndrome. Well. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it at yeah, least slightly definitely. interesting. You do look a bit it's, it's, puzzled. Yes, it's the kind of thing I can imagine on something like House MD, which I miss very much mm. as a TV show. Um, but yeah, I'm. It's again, it's not what I thought. 
what I thought it would be. I thought I thought it would be something like a like a deformity, like a physical deformity. No, I wouldn't. Why would I do? You know? Why would I do? I don't know. Like that? Because because that can still be something people think paranormal. Like mm. um, like what's it? There's I forgot what the the technical name for it is. So don't get aggy about this. Um, like the elephant man, for example. Yeah. Right. He had something. Yes. And and I believe that's a condition which yeah, um, a handful of people have had. Unlike the, the werewolf syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, all of these, all of these are like physical deformities. But I can definitely see, like, in some time way back when yeah. everyone would have been called a witch and burned at, at the stake. So you know, there's really not much difference no. um, when you come down to the treatment of these things mm-hmm. back then. Um, so yeah, Dan. Alien hands. Yeah, it is. It is something that you would hear in a in a crazy TV show or film. Well, I mean mm-hmm. that that's why it's called Doctor Strange Love Syndrome because it is from a film. Maybe we can maybe we can submit it to Ryan Murphy, and they can do American Horror Story Alien. I'm hands. surprised. To be honest, I'm surprised they haven't. <laughs> Well, I mean, because that's the thing, because they had Lobster Boy or something yeah. in, like, Freak Show. Because, like, yeah, that's a physical deformity. Yeah, that's 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 like a claw. Yeah, so. yeah, but they were all based on real people. Someone could just... Yeah, but, I mean, there are if they're, people if they're in have a, alien hands. Yeah, but if they're in a Freak Show, you can't, like, tell that someone's <laughs> actually got know. it. I think... I think it's pretty freaky if someone's fucking beating the shit out of themselves with yeah, their own is. hand like pinching their own yeah, tits it is, like, but oh, you could no. like pretend like, to do that <laughs> pretend to pinch a boob yeah. oh god oh, grim okay well yeah that was that that was an, a, a, a nice little deviation from the, the norm for us yeah anyway. okay yes because I thought it was really interesting and really scary mm. but yes. not actually paranormal I that that's it oh it's Halloween tomorrow Halloween month starts tomorrow yeah just putting it out there Spooktober 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 and we have a special Halloween episode planned so we are going to be reading little short um, stories that have been submitted of other people's real ghost um, paranormal spooky occurrences the nice. stories. I'm I'm looking forward to these. I love reading creepy shit. I, I used to love reading creepy pasta. Yeah, that was a thing. I'm just scared the crap these out are, of myself. These are true, Jasmine. These are real people's yes. experiences. Are you telling me creepy pasta is not true? Uh, okay. Oh, so uh, shh. Do not ruin my fantasy. Okay, it's fine. I'm it's not. fine. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And we hope to have you back for next week's episode. If you want to get in touch for any reason, just to say hello or to send us a story of your own true paranormal or spooky experience, please email us at spookygalspodcast at gmail.com and also make sure to like and follow our Spooky Gals Facebook page as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check us out on Twitter at SpookyGalsPod and on Instagram at SpookyGalsPodcast. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you all next time. Stay spooky. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> no thunder this time. How sad. <laughs>